Hi, I'm Tom. I'm a secondary school teacher, have been for 12 years now, and today is going to be the first of three videos focusing from a pastoral perspective on the transition from primary to secondary school, with an emphasis in particular on the experience in year seven. So my school and every other school that I'm aware of tends to run some kind of transition program, which means, for example, year six students will in the summer term pop into their new secondary school. They'll have a day there or a morning there or a number of mornings and that's designed to provide some kind of familiarity. And they're fantastic in my experience. They, they really do have an enormous impact. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that when they do finally arrive in September, the difference is enormous. Um, they go from having suddenly multiple different teachers, textbooks all over the place. They go from in the classroom and on the playground in particular being the biggest fish known and appreciated by all in year six to minnows. And I can't really imagine anything in my adult life that equates to quite such a dramatic shift. So understanding that and catering to it is hugely important if they're gonna feel the way we want and need them to feel in order to progress. One of the things that we're all aware of in a year seven classroom right from the beginning is that the loudest and the most confident students tend to dominate. And you can see that really visually because the moment you ask a question, the hands will shoot up and nine times out of 10, it will be the first hands um, and they'll be, sorry, the same hands and they're really frequent as well. It'll be the same people over and over again. And that's, that's great, there's nothing wrong with that. That's the kind of enthusiasm you want to you know, to harness and to encourage. Um, but what I'd like to talk about is the fact that you need to make a real effort in those first few weeks, throughout the year of course, but particularly at the beginning, on making sure that all voices are prized in the classroom. Now, there are various ways of doing that, obviously. You can change seating plans. You can, when you ask for uh, information or you ask a question, you can call somebody by their name rather than allowing it to be voluntary and therefore always falling back on the same hands. Um, but rather than deal with specific strategies, I just want to talk a little bit more about why it's so important that you do, that you do prize all voices in the classroom. Obviously, um, it's nice to think that those who would otherwise be a little bit quieter are going to be given the platform, the chance to speak, to express themselves. Um, that, that's obviously really important and we want them to feel that they have that platform. But beyond that, I think it goes um, further, the effect that you have when you ensure that all voices are prized, because at the same time as providing that platform for those who would not otherwise actively seek it, you are providing the kind of example to all of the rest that they desperately need. And by the example, what I mean is the fact that at the heart of civilised life ought to be the capacity to listen to and engage with all voices. So when you demonstrate that, you encourage that same culture. And if you can build a culture like that in your classroom, in which all feel that they not only have the chance to express themselves and any ideas that might be occurring, but they're actively going to be asked to do so. If you can provide that kind of culture in which all are accepting of that, then you are at the same time gonna provide a climate in which all of them feel safe, they feel respected, and they feel appreciated. And if you give that, then you have exactly the kind of climate in which anyone can and will flourish.